Testing one, two, three, four, test one, two. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Looking pretty good out there. We're going to go live here and just, well, technically we are live right now, but as of the current situation, we do have again the possibility of some quiet conditions, hopefully in the mid south here for later on tonight. We are just gearing up and getting ready to go. It is just about 8.22 and about ready to, ha to hop on to get some weather done. A little bit on the bright side here for right now, a little bit in shade at this point in time. So if you are just joining us, thanks for stopping on by, and thanks for keeping an eye on what's going on with our weather situation here. Live and direct from the House Onik backyard, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. This is our brand new and improved edition of News Channel 3 Weather Overtime. We're outdoors tonight. Why? Because this is how we make sacrifices for you in the weather department. If you're in the air conditioning, we can at least go outside and at least get a little bit more of the heat and humidity out here, and there's plenty of that, believe you me, as I worked a little bit too hard hard on the hedges out across the backyard. Not going to show them to you because unfortunately we got a little bit more work to do there. Also, really have to thank my wife for the fact that we've got these really cool things called dryer sheets and these apparently do a pretty good job of keeping the mosquitoes away. I had no idea that that was the case. This would have made hiking in Boy Scouts a lot easier to keep away from that and apparently a police officer at her school uses that exact same thing. I did not know about that to help make certain that the vest is all nice and fluffy and smooth and good smelling for uh, on-duty stuff so kind of cool to think about there. If you are just joining us for the first time this is our online video weather blog, weather overtime, good opportunity for you to get caught up on what's going on with the weather. We'll be introducing a chat feature here as soon as we can get it going. <clears throat> Excuse me. You got anything you'd like to send to me, direct uh, questions, concerns, ideas, anything like that, right down here at the bottom of the screen, email address austin.onic at wreg.com. Forecast for tonight in the blue bar at the lower section of your screen right here, and that again showing the possibility of a few more showers and thunderstorms coming up in, again, the course of about the next day or so. Much of what we're looking at right now is going to be, again, decently quiet across the area. If you want to research me on social media and find out more about what's going on, all you have to do is drop by. By the red bar down here for several of my video sources out there, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, on many different locations out there. So definitely want to check out that and find out what's going on. Let's go ahead and get going for tonight and show you more about what's happening out across the area. Not a lot to be seen at this time, but we do have, again, uh, the jet stream going north of us, adding a lot of energy to a lot of the area up around Canada tonight, which has been picking up some pretty decent thunderstorms up there, including some supercell thunderstorms uh, as of right Right now looking again at not much of anything happening where we are but where that big red blob is back over just south of Hudson Bay a lot of air moving on through very very quickly and that's helping to stir up a lot of activity meanwhile here in the mid-south area we have little if anything really going on in the way of atmospheric winds uh, stirring things around a little bit things are very much on the sultry side and very quiet there's not a lot of wind going on so there's not enough to stir up too much in the way of thunderstorms but there is some activity out there we'll take a look at that you Gene in the Pacific is a hurricane and continuing to make its way uh, back on up to the northern areas of Baja, staying just offshore, not a threat to the United States, so good news on that. The other thing that we've got going on at this point in time, switching over for just a second and looking out into the Atlantic, going to switch over. These are the winds, the atmospheric winds moving along where you can see the jet stream at the top of your screen pretty well. Going to switch over to particulates for just a little bit. We touched on this a little bit last night and showed you a little bit more. Take a look at that bright yellow area that you see see there coming off of Africa and moving out into the Atlantic. That's dust and sand particles, little tiny particles from the Sahara Desert, which when it moves out over portions of the Atlantic does a very good job of kind of squashing thunderstorm development and blocking out some of the sunshine. So that quiets the possibility of anything developing in the way of hurricanes. So that's good news. But is it a problem for later on? We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Let's go to the fourth rock from the sun and show you more about what's happening. The Mars Weather Probe, the Remote Environmental Monitoring Station, just from yesterday, picking up again a 
high temperature, a maximum air temperature of negative 9.4 and a minimum of 108 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty chilly up on Mars there. And the ground temperature a little bit warmer, 43 degrees Fahrenheit and 131 degrees below zero out there as well. Lots of solar radiation showing up. And if you'd like to know more about the remote environmental monitoring station, all you have to do is go to mars.nasa.gov for tons of great weather information available. And again, this only comes out every few days, but it's still kind of cool to look at along with some of those pictures. Plus, we're also waiting for those pictures to come back from the Juno spacecraft, which flew right over the great red spot on Jupiter, one of the biggest storms in the solar system. That's going to be coming up in about three days' time. Really looking forward to that, so stay tuned for more there. Earthquakes in the Mid-South, not a great deal to talk about. Did have one, it looks like, within about the last uh, 24 hours. We'll take a look there and show you that one occurred at 5.43 this morning, a 1.6 uh, just back up around the area around the Missouri Boot Hill, southern Boot Hill just north of Blytheville. It looks like it was almost right underneath I-55, believe it or not. 1.6, not that much. If you'd like to know more about the earthquakes that are out there, go to the Center for Earthquake Research and Information available from the University of Memphis. That's memphis.edu slash C-E-R-I for more information. Sunset light at St. Francis in Cordova, seen along Germantown Parkway, and a beautiful view. Traffic on the heavy side, but not doing too bad after rush hour. If you'd like to see a little bit more about what's going on in the Mid-South area where it comes to traffic out there, all you have to do is go to wreg.com slash webcams for more information. And we got tons of them out there, including, let me just take a second to show you a little bit more about this one. Many thanks to our crack engineering staff for getting this one back up and going. Shoot, Mosquito, get out of here. You're not welcome. Uh, Collierville Square Camera, great opportunity opportunity to see this up and working again and a beautiful view from around the square in Collierville tonight. And again, wreg.com slash webcams for more. Scattered showers taking place into and around the area. We are seeing, again, a little bit more activity just into northern parts of Mississippi. And that, again, developing, blossoming, and then basically kind of falling away. Not expecting too much of anything else to be happening for later on tonight because of the fact that the daytime heating is gone, the sunset is gone, and there's really not much of anything else that's going to help to stir the atmosphere up. So maybe some late showers into around News Channel 3 at 10. Beyond that, probably not looking at too much out there uh, at this time, so good news on that. Here's what it looks like as we go into the course of the next couple of days. Again, the storm systems that are back to the north of us, mainly doing just that, just staying back to the north of us, so it's not going to be seeing anything really heading our direction. Now, we do notice, again, a minor storm system here in the Plain States. Notice that cold front dropping down to the south across the Dakotas, shoe fly. We got again a little bit more in the way of chances of rainfall coming up from the Gulf of Mexico where we are off and on over the next couple of days, but it's that next front dropping into the area. The National Weather Service is keeping a concern on that for the potential of maybe some stronger storms from Friday and Saturday. We'll be watching that with a lot of interest as that comes along. Let's go ahead and run the numbers for you and show you what we've got going on again throughout the course of the rest of the evening into later on tonight. Uh, temperatures will be very much on the mild side, not getting, in fact, much cooler than what we are seeing right now. So if you're expecting anything the way of cool weather, not happening here. Temperatures back in the lower to mid 70s across much of the Mid-South. Chances for rainfall pretty much gone by midnight and into overnight tomorrow morning. Uh, getting into tomorrow morning at this point, this is where it could be a little bit more interesting to where we see uh, maybe the possibility some patchy fog out there uh, into the evening hours, but just not really seeing all that much. Chances of rainfall very limited at this time. High temperatures tomorrow, again, back in the lower to mid-90s. Heat index temperatures pushing, if not over 100 degrees in many locations. And there will be that chance of isolated showers and thunderstorms in the green area that you see on screen there. Wednesday night, low temperatures only back into the mid-70s. And seeing, again, a few stray showers and thunderstorms continuing not many, but still possible Wednesday night into Thursday. High temperatures on Thursday going back into around the lower 90s or so and quiet conditions across much of the Mid-South area all the way on through. So not much to be seen in the way of major change coming through. It's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. Heat index temperatures on Thursday back into the triple digits as well. Low temperatures Thursday night, again, mid-70s with an isolated chance of showers and thunderstorms, mainly in the green shaded areas north of I-40 Thursday night into Friday. And then high temperatures temperatures on Friday going back into the lower to mid 90s. Heat index temperatures again around 100 degrees. Second verse same as the first. 
kids, ask your parents. They'll be able to explain that better than I can. It's an old song lyric. More chances of showers and thunderstorms going into Friday, and some of that could linger into Friday night of around a 40 to 50 percent chance in parts of the area but mainly getting that chance throughout the rest of the next couple of days toward Friday. Highs on Saturday, thanks to more clouds and more rainfall, could be a little bit uh, less back in the upper 80s or so, but we're still going to see hot temperatures out there with heat indexes going back into the mid to upper 90s, so very uncomfortable for Saturday, and the possibility of getting more showers and thunderstorms again thickest around I-40 southward toward the Mississippi and into around northern Mississippi. That's where we're getting the heaviest amount of activity there. National Hurricane Center, not much of anything else going on into around the next uh, 48 hours or so. Checking out the five-day graphic, we're still not seeing too much of anything on the extended. There was a disturbance off the Cabo Verde Islands. Not seeing that at this time, so doubtful we're going to be seeing too much of anything uh, in the way of any major amounts of uh, storm systems coming on through here. So good news at this time, but remember, if you're going to be going anywhere around the Gulf, the Caribbean, or the East Coast in the next couple of days, this is where you're going to want to watch out for stuff happening, and we'll keep an eye on that to let you know more about what's going on here. Space weather, again, Juno went over the Great Red Spot uh, just yesterday at about this time. No spacecraft, spacecraft has ever been so close, and cannot wait to see what this is all about. It's absolutely incredible uh, to take a look at. More information available from spaceweather.com, and of course you can find out more information about weather, about dog for adoption, about how you can help the planet out, some severe weather, an amazing video from storm chaser Reed Timmer into around portions of the Dakotas, if I'm not mistaken, uh, through the day today, and just absolutely amazing video going on uh, into that area. This is the area of the country that gets the most severe weather at this time of the year, so it is possible to see a decent amount going on at this time in this particular location, but still not a lot going on uh, where we are, thank Thankfully, things are decently quiet, and I do a whole bunch of other stuff uh, around here involving science and all kinds of other stuff happening. So if you'd like to know more about what it looks like out there, uh, drop by my website for more information from the Storm Chaser's point of view and also from Severe Weather as well. Join me on my Facebook page. We've got tons of weather information available here, and again, also the possibility of being able to see uh, more about what's going on in and around the Mid-South area. Uh, we post a lot of stuff on here about science and about volunteering and about all kinds of neat stuff. So again, join me uh, for more information. We'll be glad to give you more details as to what's going on in and around the Mid-South. Join me also tomorrow morning. If you'd like to know more about what's going on with weather, I'll be on the air with Bob and Josh, AM 730, with your complete News Channel 3 updated forecast. And that'll be starting at 7 o'clock in the morning, Monday through Friday. Be able to give you updates on what's going on in and around the Mid-South where it comes to severe weather or anything else. That's Monday through Friday, 7 to 9. Also on the Internet, but pick them up at AM 730 on Yahoo Sports Radio for more information as to what's going on. I thought my dogs were getting into trouble there for just a second. Another update of your forecast again tomorrow morning. And, of course, don't forget Jim Jaggers on News Channel 3 at 10 later on tonight. And Todd Demers, bright and early tomorrow morning. Tons of information available from him and from them and also into the rest of the next several days as well. Again, email address down here at the bottom of your screen, austin.onic at wreg.com. Would love to have you along for anything. If there's something on here you would like to see that we could feature, please let me know. But unless you tell me, psychic powers don't work too well, so it'd be kind of nice to have that on there. We'll have updates throughout the rest of the forecast over the next several days, so stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 on air and online, live and direct from House Onik on a very sultry evening. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Stay tuned for more coming up with News Channel 3, and we'll keep you advised.